Hi, this is Nick from PrimeLoops.com. Today I'm going to show you how to do a basic dirty south arrangement, starting with loops, and then letting those loops inspire us to do a little bit more on top of them. So let's get started and I'll show you just how easy this is to do. First we're going to load up a good synth loop here. I'm just going to right click, go to Dr. Reg's loop player, and then I'm going to load up a patch. Now I think I'll take this loop from the dirty south synth loops refill. I'll just open up the library here, Now I'm going to scroll through some of these loops and try to find one that's suitable for where I'm trying to go with this track. Oh, I think that's perfect. I'll just play that one all the way through for you. Drag the BPM down to 85. Now let's go find a drum loop for that. I'm going to go to our Dirty South Drum Loops library, which is in both WAVE and ACID formats. So I'll just load up an NN19 digital sampler here. I'll right click on it, go to Initialize Patch, and then we'll go find a drum loop. And again, I'm going to take this from Dirty South Drum Loops. Now I'm going to preview a few of these to find one that works well with that synth line we already loaded up. Oh, I really like that one. So now I'm going to be working with two bar loops here, so I'm just going to drag the right flag over here so that we only have two bars selected. I'll zoom in a bit. Now I'm just going to take the notes from the Dr. Rex and a trigger for the NN19 and put them into the sequencer here. So first I'll select the Dr. Rex in the sequencer view and hit to track. That will drop our drum loop right onto the track. Next I'll go to NN19, select my pencil tool, create a nice two bar loop here, and then go in and edit it. Next I'll select one bar here and since our drum loop lasts for two bars, I'll just come down to the note C3, which triggers the default pitch of the loop, and drag it out for two bars. Here's what these sound like together. So far, so good. We've already got a really solid foundation for a track here, built from two high quality loops, and from this I'll be inspired to draw out the rest of an arrangement putting in some extra melodic elements, etc. to really spice it up. So now let's move on to adding those extra elements. Now I want to add a little bit of an orchestral element to this track, so I'm going to go find a combinator patch to help us do that. So I'll go to Create, Combinator, and then I'll browse around for a suitable patch. I'm just going to go to the Reason Factory sound bank for this one, go to Combinator Patches, and then go to Strings, and load up Cloud Busting Cellos. I'll preview what that sounds like for you. Now while we're out here in arrange mode, let's just draw in a four bar loop of cello here, and then go in with the pointer tool and edit it. Let me just zoom out a bit so we can see everything we're working with here. Now I've got the sequencer set on eighth note precision, which is exactly where I want it, and I'll start laying in a pattern. I'll start out with a quarter note, of A sharp, followed by an eighth note of A, another eighth note on G sharp, and then end off with an eighth note on D. Perfect. Now as a response to this little four note section, I'm going to set up a chord to trigger right here on bar two. Now I want these to trigger for a quarter note, so I'll select quarter note. I'll put in a quarter note of G, F, and D. Now I want to mirror these first two bars and the last two bars, so I'll select all these notes and then copy them over, holding down Option while I drag. Now I can modify these to be a response to the first two bars. Now for the second phrase I want the first two notes to trigger on G under C2, 
Then the second note to trigger on D sharp down here. And the third to trigger on C. And then I'm going to cut out this last chord altogether because I'm going to do something else with the arrangement at that point. Here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to add one more element into this basic little arrangement. This time I'm going to use a subtractor, so I right click, create, go to subtractor. Again, I'm going to the Reason Factory sound bank for this. I'll go to Subtractor Patches, Mono Synth, and then Ice Queen. Here's what that patch sounds like. Now I'm going to want a four bar pattern for the Ice Queen patch here. So again, I'll just drag in four bars and go in and edit it. First I'll start with a quarter note of G right here. And then I'll answer that with another G an octave above on the next bar. Now coming over to these last two bars, I'll set up a D-sharp trigger right about here. And then on this last bar, I'm going to trigger an A-sharp and then come to rest on A right before the fourth bar ends. Here's what it sounds like. Now I want to add a little bit more color to that sound, and I think a little 16th note delay might be in order. So I'm going to right click on this subtractor, go to create, and then come down to digital delay line. I'm going to keep this set on three step delay. I'm going to bring the dry wet down to 64, that is 50% of the way up, and I'm going to set the feedback down to about 36. <laughs> to get started on fleshing out this progression a little more. So what I'm going to do is come back out to the arrange mode and I'm going to copy our entire progression thus far and I'll just do that by drawing a box around all of it. And then I'm going to copy this over so that now we have an 8 bar progression. Now I can get to work creating little change ups here and there. I won't go too far into that because that really depends on the individual producer's taste but I'll give you a few ideas. One of the most powerful methods for fleshing out an arrangement like this is simply to cut out the drums for a little while. Now all you need to do to alter your drums is to double click on them, come down to your drum trigger, and then drag them back for however long you want the drums to be silenced. I just want them silenced for a quarter note length to create a little bit of a drop in the middle of the track. Here's what this part of the arrangement sounds like now. <laughs> And that's just one of the simplest techniques that you can employ to create a little bit of forward momentum in your track. I'll zoom back out here and we'll take a look at another example of this. Now one nice way to differentiate the last eight bars of a sequence from the first eight bars is to add a simple note trigger in right at the finale. I'm just going to go up to 16th note divisions here in the combinator view. And I'm going to add in four simple 16th note triggers all together at the end of the whole sequence. First I'll zoom in a little bit. and I'll enter those four sixteenth note triggers on the D note right above C2. So I'll come back out to Arrange View. Also, before I play it back, I'm going to bring the volume of the delay down just a little bit because I think that Ice Queen patch is overwhelming the mix. Let's hear what it sounds like now. I'll see you next time for more music production tips and tricks. Stay creative!